Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the previous video, we discussed about the Rao's sarcoma variant. So we talked about how it looks like and what all it consists of. So in this, we'll study about the details of this virus and who discovered it and how it all got started and all of the things related to the RSV virus. So let's get started with this video. So talking about the RSV virus, so I'll discuss some of the major things which I found to be useful. So it all started in 1909 uh, when Rouse began his study of a sarcoma that had appeared in the breast muscle of a hen. And in initial experiments, Rouse succeeded in transmitting the tumor by implanting small fragments of it into other birds of the same breed. And later as a variation of this experiment, he grounds up a sarcoma fragment in sand and filtered the resulting homogenate. So, so in the first part, we understand that uh, this guy, Peyton Bruce, was the one who tried to uh, filter the particular virus or take that particular this agent, which we known as the chicken sarcoma virus, uh, from that particular chicken and try to implant or try to inject that particular virus on different organisms. So in the second part, what we see is when he injected the resulting filtrate into young birds, they too developed tumors. And sometimes within several weeks, he subsequently found that these induced tumors could also be homogenized to yield once again an infectious agent that could be transmitted to eat yet other birds which also develop sarcoma at the sites of infection. So we know what is sarcoma. Sarcoma is the growth of cancer cells on the activation of or injection of certain agents. So in this case, which is the virus. So Roos was the guy he injected the same filter of the particular uh, virus homogenate which he uh, got from that particular chicken and injected into young birds. So he thought, so he wanted to check what happens into them. So he resulted into, into the formation of tumors. So moving into, so now what we see is this uh, the serial passages of sarcoma inducing agent from one animal to another yielded a number of conclusions that are obvious to us but at this time were nothing less than revolutionary so the carcinogenic agent whatever its nature was clearly was very small since it cause since it could pass through filter and hence it was virus so at this point of time what we know is that uh, nature of that particular virus was unknown to everyone even to patent ruse but it was very clear that it was a virus because it was very very small and it could pass through that particular filter and he got that particular homogenate and injected into birds right so he injected to birds and that particular bird uh, showed tumorous activities or de had developed tumors on injection of this particular virus so from there he concluded that it was a virus because it was very small and it could pass through uh, very thin uh, filters all right so one thing was very clear that it was a virus after all uh, when the yeah, bird was infected with tumors also this virus could cause the appearance of a sarcoma into an injected chicken doing so on a predictable timeline so such an infectious agent offered researchers the unique opportunity to induce cancers at will rather than relying on spontaneous unpredictable appearance of humor, tumors or animals. So this particular uh, the development or discovery of uh, these particular viruses by Peter Andrews also helped the different researchers and scientists to induce cancers or check the cancer and uh, check the particular effect of these viruses and check the cancer effects on a particular organisms. Also, in addition to its ability to induce cancers, this agent which came to be called the Roos sarcoma virus. So after understanding so much and checking the uh, checking these viruses on different organisms and checking its viability and ability to induce cancers. So researchers and other scientists named this particular virus as the Roos sarcoma virus or we known as RSV, which was capable of multiplying within the tissues of a chicken, far more virus could be recovered from an infected tumor tissue that was originally injected. So that was pretty much clear about the R. So here is a pictorial uh, view. So how he did that particular experiment. 
So here is a chicken that we see with sarcoma in breast muscles. So a particular chicken that he found uh, had sarcoma in its breast muscles. Also, so what he did was next he removed those particular sarcoma and broke them into small chunks of tissues. As you can see, he broke them into small chunks of tissues. And then he what he did was he grinded up those particular sarcoma cells with sand. And next he filtrated them. So he collected the filtrate that had passed through those fine pore filters. So this is where it was concluded that that particular agent was a virus when it had passed the filter test. And that filter and that and the filter that we got here was able to induce cancers. So after this step, this particular filter that was collected after filtrating was injected into another different chickens or another different sets of chickens. So it was observed that sarcoma in injected chicken. So as you can see a red part or development of sarcoma or tumors in the chickens, new jar in the young chickens which were injected with the filter was observed. So this is how we concluded about the, or this is how we know about what is RSV virus and how it all got started. So before the, also one more less last point I want to explain, which is the rebirth of the Rose Sarcoma virus research began largely at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena in the laboratory of Renata Dalbeco. Also Dalbeco's postdoctoral fellow, Harry Rubin found that when stocks of RSV were introduced into petri dish carrying cultures of chicken embryo fibroblast the RSV infected cell survives apparently indefinitely so it was some so they were start so when uh, complexities about RSV were known so they began to test the RSV in different conditions so it was found that the stocks of RSV when they were introduced in a particular petri dish which contained cultures of chicken embryo fibroblast so the RSV was incapable or showed inability of inducing any sort of cancer effects. So it seemed that the RSV parasit uh, parasitized these cells, forcing them to produce a steady steamy or progeny virus particles for many days, weeks and even months. And most of the viruses in contrast were known to enter into host cells, multiply and kill other host cells. Also the multi uh, multitude of progeny virus Particles released from the dying cells could then proceed to infect yet another susceptible cells in the vicinity and repeating the further cycle of infection, multiplication and cell destruction. So this is a simple cycle that we know that follows for every other virus. All right. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like, share and do subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching.